What's going on guys? So uh, today I want to talk about a salt and pepper shaker, which is what these are. These are little salt and pepper shakers I got with my wife at Williams Sonoma. Um, I'll tell you the story with them because we had no intentions of buying these, but here they are. We ended up with them anyway, uh, just because I thought they were cool. They're uh, pretty expensive and I looked up a bunch of reviews in the store. When I first saw them, I, I really wanted them. I was sold on the idea. I thought it was really cool. It was very gadgety being kind of a gearhead guy. I fell in love with them. Uh, the full price on these are $30 a piece. So <laughs> right off the bat, I, I did not want to spend $60 on a salt and pepper shaker set, uh, especially smaller ones like this. Uh, these are basically table side. They're not big enough to really use in the kitchen to cook with because you'd be constantly filling them. So this is just you know a smaller set you leave on the table. Uh, but what I did was, what a lot of people do in 2019, I thought about making a purchase. I immediately took out my pocket computer, i.e. cell phone, and I looked up reviews real quick. Now, the reviews I saw, uh, I believe it was through William Sonoma's main website, they were predominantly negative. So why did I still get these? And that's kind of why I'm making this video, because I'm asking people out there in general how much value you put on other people's opinions. So many people are so willing to give an opinion these days. There's so many review sites. Uh, something that I personally use a lot is Yelp. I like Yelp. Um, especially different restaurants. And I have to say, I've been really happy with hearing people's feedback on certain things and avoiding, you know, being disappointed. I might have wanted to go to a restaurant in the past and I read people's reviews and they said, oh, you know, it stinks because of this, this, and this. And I said, all right, and I decided not to go. Or vice versa, where someone recommended something and I said, all right, that sounds nice. And I went, and I had a good time. And it goes for everything. It goes for all kinds of products. Like I said, uh, food and, and restaurant experiences, vacations, pretty much everything. People put their opinion out there. Now, clearly, if you watch my videos on a regular basis, you see I do a lot of reviews. I guess I'm a very opinionated person. My purpose here is literally to just share my life experiences with all kinds of stuff. Obviously, knives are the biggest hobby, but I do all kinds of things. So um, I know some people who watch the videos, especially like a knife review, they put a lot of value in what I say. And I really greatly appreciate that because I give unbiased, totally honest reviews. Now, just because I may not have liked the knife or I love the knife doesn't mean everyone will. So I always recommend you don't just take my word for something. If you're going to be a good consumer, that means getting as much information as possible about anything. So for example, let's say I do a video on a Spider Codelica, right? A little pocket knife. And you're thinking about buying one and I say it's great. Don't just go out and buy one. Go watch a bunch of people's videos, as many videos as there are on that knife online. Then read all the forums, right? Then read reviews. Get a collective idea of whether people like it in general, all right? Don't just take one person's opinion, doesn't matter if it's me or someone else, get a variety of opinions. But at the end of the day, sometimes if everyone still says they don't like something and you really wanna try it anyway, generally speaking, you will. And that's what happened here. I saw these in the store. I really, really want them because I thought they were pretty much the coolest salt and pepper grinders I've ever seen in my life. I read reviews real quick in the store on my cell phone and people had all these bad things to say about them, but I still ended up buying them. Um, I did not pay full price, thank God. I, I think it was 20% off, so it ended up being 50 bucks. Still $25 a piece for these is still, it's very, very expensive. It's not something I would do all the time. It was definitely an impulse purchase, but I just absolutely love the design. So how this works, these are plunger style grinders. So there's a big stainless steel plunger on the top, uh, milled stainless steel. It's very, very heavy. It's all solid stainless. All right, if I turn this upside down, you can see there's a little view window in there because you can see what you're grinding. If I push through, actually I can unscrew this to show you. So this is the uh, little reservoir where you put your, your product. In this case, it's salt and pepper. I could switch these. I can have two different types of salts, two different types of peppers. I can put you know, granulated garlic. I could put whatever I want in here, really, but I will keep them salt and pepper. Uh, it's not that big because, you know, they're much smaller. Like I said, they're table size. They're not really, you know, going to be great for seasoning in the kitchen because you're going to be filling it all the time, especially if you're using a lot of, uh, you know, different spices and stuff. But anyway, you put all your, your stuff in there and then you can see the actual plunger or the rod here is where all of those uh, grinding teeth are. Okay. And then on the inside, everything funnels down to that hole. So when you're pushing the, the top of this rod, it's pushing uh, that that rod in the middle all the way through and it's rubbing on all the peppercorns, okay? Because obviously upside down, gravity is pulling all these down. So it's rubbing on the sides of them, therefore, you know, grinding it up and whatever falls out as the rod's pushing forward is what is gonna go on your food, right? 
So really simple concept. I took this apart in the store to see how it works because when I, I picked it up, I looked at it, I you know, pushed down, I was grinding some, some salt in my hand. I'm like, how does this work? So I took it apart, really simple concept. I love it. It's super heavy duty. It's very, very heavy, very solid. I absolutely loved it, right? So put this back on here, shake those down. I'll give you a quick little demonstration. So you're just gonna push the bottom. And there you go, Brian's pepper. Push it as many times as you want for whatever pepper you want. Same thing with the salt, which you're not gonna be able to see very well, but hopefully you can see it shooting out of there. Same deal, all right? So, I love the concepts, really wanted them, looked up reviews, horrible feedback. The first thing people said is it's not big enough to season you know, uh, stuff while I'm cooking. I have to constantly refill them. Now, I don't think that's a negative. I just don't think that that's what these, the purpose they serve. I don't, I think these are, you know, table grinders because they're so small and compact, right? So I don't see that as horrible feedback. I just see that as a suggestion. Don't use it in the kitchen, okay? To spice your food up all the time because you'd be constantly filling it up. They're too small. Some other negative things people said about these is that they had them, but they were very top heavy. So they kept falling over. All right, yes, it has a very narrow base on the bottom. Okay, so when you're placing them down, just be careful. You know, I've been using these for probably two weeks now. I didn't drop them. They've, it, I've had no problem with it. I use it on this table, and this is a very uneven table underneath the tablecloth, as you guys know from all my videos. All right, it's like a natural finish, all right? So it's totally not flat or even. But when I put these down, they somehow don't fall over because I'm purposely trying to be careful with them. You know, I don't want to be clumsy. I don't want to knock them over. Um, when people do drop these, this uh, view window is not glass, it's plastic. It's very hard plastic. So some people complained that when they fell, the plastic cracked or broke. So, I mean, even though they're solid stainless steel, they still have some fragile aspect to them because of this weak point with this plastic. But I don't care. I read all these horrible reviews that said it's way too expensive, it's way fragile, don't get them, but I still bought them. So I guess what I'm asking is how much value do you put on other people's reviews, other people's feedback? You know, do you change what you do in life, whether it's buying a knife, you know, everyone says it sucks, so you end up not buying it, uh, whether it's going on vacation and not staying at a hotel because someone said there's pee stains on the wall, <laughs> you know, is it a restaurant that you wanted to go to but then read someone had a fingernail in their soup? I mean, do other people's experiences affect what you do in your life? Now, obviously, there's gonna be mixed results. I'm just curious and looking forward to comments and maybe some mini stories and stuff. But I've, I found that, generally speaking, all this information that's out there is a very positive thing. It's very cool to hear what other people experience so you can you know, get a better idea of what to expect. That's basically what it comes down to, right? Obviously, I spend a lot of time giving opinions, doing reviews on all kinds of stuff. Uh, so obviously I do appreciate that. But this is one of those rare cases where I read a lot of bad stuff and I totally just ignored it because I wanted it, because I thought it was super cool. I am a sucker for a fun gadget. And I've ha I have a bunch of different you know, salt and pepper grinders. I happen to like them. I don't specifically collect them or anything. I'm not on purpose anyway. But I just thought these were just really, really cool. That's basically what it came down to is I, I just thought it was awesome. I don't have any of the problems that other people have. Uh, is there a day where I go to put it down on a table and it's unstable and it falls over and the plastic cracks? Maybe. I don't know. That's what other people experienced. Maybe it'll happen. Maybe it won't. Maybe I'll be extra careful about it. You know, some people said that the plunger is just too hard to push. And, and that's basically because as you're going to push down, if it kind of grabs a couple of those peppercorns that are hard and it doesn't want to push, that's a simple solution. Just give it a quick little shake. They'll move out of the way and you can try it again. So, I mean, like I said, just because other people don't like something doesn't mean you're not gonna like it. So, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe a year from now, these things will be broken and gone and I've wasted money, but for now, I really liked it. And this is one of those cases where I just did not listen to other people. Also, before I go, the tablecloth. Uh, my wife bought this just because spring's around the corner here, so a nice little lemon pattern. Uh, it's nice because it's white, kind of livens up the place a little bit. It's a brown table underneath, you guys know it, you've seen it a million times. Uh, I kind of thought about just keeping it in the background for the videos, but I very soon realized the pattern is too distracting, so I'm probably not going to, but I'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, chances are I'm not going to use it anyway. It's just going to be the brown table because whatever I'm showing on you know, camera, I want to focus on this. I don't want people looking at the lemons and stuff. You know what I mean? Even though the white kind of helps a little, I think the pattern detracts from that. So give me your feedback, but chances are you're not going to see it anymore anyway. 
I just figured I'd ask. I know like around the holidays, if I have a Christmas tablecloth, I'll just leave it because it's very inconvenient in literally lifting it up every time I want to make a video and taking it off. Uh, but whatever, I don't want to have it all year round. Holidays are one thing, but this will probably be on here for a couple months. So anyway, that is it. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Looking forward to the comments and your stories. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. Take care.